Now finally we can get to the version of a structure definition that I actually want to use and I think common convention generally uses. And we also have to answer the question, why are there different ways of defining a structure type? And the answer is actually pretty understandable. So what I want is to be able to declare my variable ORD to have type ORDER with a capital O. Just order, that's it. So it looks just like any other type, like int or float. There's no need to say struct order. I don't want it to be a second class citizen. And I like this because it helps me remember that the same rules apply to this variable as to an int or a float. So how do we do this? Well, we can't use the method that we show that I showed in the previous video. That doesn't work. Just writing it like this. Even though this is actually the most logical looking definition, and in fact, if you go on to a course like CSE 116, you will notice this is the only available option. Um, but in C, if we define it this way, we end up calling the type struct order. And I've said I don't like that. I said I prefer if it just were called order. So what do we do? Well, we need to use a feature called typedef, which we saw a couple of weeks ago. And so just a quick review. Suppose that I want to work with lots of vectors of three elements. In fact, I want a program that just deals with lots and lots of these three element vectors to the extent that I might want to have a type called just vector. I want to be able to declare a vector v. Well, obviously there is no type in C called vector. I have to create it myself. So how do I create a brand new type? If I want to create a type called vector that is an array of three floats, the first thing I would do is I would write a variable declaration for, that, uh, for the name vector. I would first declare a variable with the name I want for my new type, and I would um, have a valid declaration that describes the type, so a, an array of three floats. Once I have a valid variable declaration, I just put the word type def in front of it. And now line 18 is a definition of a brand new type called vector, which is an array of three floats. And I can then declare vectors by just writing vector v or something like that. And I can have them be the argument to a function uh, or use them anywhere else I would use an array of three floats. I can use the same logic for a structure type. So let's think back to the very first video. In the first video, I showed that if I wanted to in main, I could declare a single variable called ORD with this monstrosity of a type. It's got an order ID. Oh, whoops, my indentation got sort of messed up there. Uh, it's got an order ID, it's got a price, and it has a customer name, which is a, a character array. So if I wrote this in main, this would be the declaration of one variable. And the type of that one variable would be this mess. And we don't want that. We want to be able to give it a name. But I remember, wait a minute, if I have any variable declaration, I can turn it into a type definition by just adding the word type def at the beginning. So here, if I change this name to capital O order, here I've declared a variable with all of the properties that I want in my type order. All I have to do is make it a type. And all I have to do to achieve that is put the word typedef at the beginning. So remember that although it's on multiple lines, it is just one long line. It's one long definition. This, this uh, definition here is defining a type called order that is a structure with an int, a float, and a, a character array of length 101. And now I can go down here and I can declare a variable of type order. So let's try that. All right. And... There we go. Gives the same result as before. I do actually want to complete task number two. I haven't forgotten about it, but I, I suppose in hindsight, it should, this actually should have been task number three. I want to do this first. So convert this print statement just like in the previous example. I'm, I'm actually going to cannibalize some of my code from the previous example. So here is my print order function from the previous video. And it doesn't work with this version of the type because as of line 24, there is no type called struct order. That's not a valid type. I've defined a type called order that has all the properties I want, so I'm going to use that. And so remember that if you use a type def to define your struct in this manner, giving the name at the end, because that's the way it would work with a type def, then the name of the type is just order, not struct order. Uh, maybe you should be asking the question, OK, fine, but why are there two ways of doing this? And the answer is actually pretty easy. Uh, it's that when structs were initially invented in the C language, there was no such thing as type def. So for a period of time, if you wanted a structure type, this was the only way of creating it. You had to do it this way, and you had to use the, the word struct order to refer to the type. 
Type defs were invented later. And so by the time we invented type defs, um, the struct order version, the old style structure declaration already existed and we were stuck with it. That's why there are two versions. It's because type def came along a bit too late to solve the problem initially. However, in modern practice, generally speaking, because there are still people that use this style and it is valid, in modern practice, I believe this is generally considered the default. So if you ask the average C programmer, I think they would write their structs this way. It's not true in C++. In C++, there is such thing as a struct, but you wouldn't use a type def to define it typically. So it is a C-specific thing. Okay, so we've seen that. We now see this is the idiomatic way we're going to define our structs in this course. Here's a way of passing a struct into a function, just like if we pass an int or float. If we pass a, a, an object of type order, what gets actually passed is a copy of the value. Um, but then there's this thing, task number two. When I create the variable ORD, I have to use a bunch of assignment statements to set its members. That could be a bit tedious. What if it has lots of members? It sure would be nice if I could get all the benefits of initializing the struct like I would initialize an array, where I initialize every element at once when I create the variable. And it turns out I have that option. So um, I'll comment these out. There are actually a lot of different formats for this, and people have noticed there actually are lots of other exotic array initializers that we didn't directly cover. Uh, I'm only going to talk about the most simple structure initializer, which is uh, you put curly brackets, and just like with arrays, you are only allowed to use this syntax when the variable is declared. You can't go back and reset it later using curly brackets, only when the variable is initially created. And what you do is you go through the members from beginning to end. You start with this one, then this one, then this one, and you just give the, the initial value for each one. So the initial value for order ID, which is the first thing, is 6. The initial value for price, which is the second thing, is 18.7. And the initial value for this, which is an array, so I, I have to initialize this third member the way I would normally initialize a character array. Well, what can I do to initialize a character array? I could use curly brackets. I could say, okay, R... E, B. Okay, but we know already if it's a character array and we want to store a string in it, we can choose to initialize it with a uh, double quote initializer. So we aren't allowed to write order.customername equals this string. That's not valid. We're not allowed to assign a uh, double quoted string into an array. But we are allowed to initialize an array to contain a double quoted string. And because this is an initializer, we're allowed to do this. Um, the same way that we'd be allowed to do it with an array by itself outside of a, of a structure. So I run that, we can see it does work, I, and then I run the code, and it gives the right output. Okay, so there's our tour of the ways of defining structure types, but in this course, except for a pretty major issue that we'll see next week, we really prefer the type def version of a definition for a structure type.